I was racing through the hallway. I knew I had to run for my life. I pounded on the first door I saw. Open, open the door, please. Hey, hey, who are you? What do you want? He's after me. What? Who? Help me. No, 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 don't go outside. Okay, hold on. Let's get some context here. I'm Luna, and I was born in a small town in Switzerland. Before we go any further, like and subscribe to hear my story. Thank you. It took my mom hours to give birth to me, so much so that doctors and nurses figured it would be okay to take a lunch break since they'd be there forever. Maybe it's because I was scared with everyone there. But as soon as the room was empty and my dad took a bite of a sandwich, I decided to come through. My mom gave birth to me pretty much by herself. What a hero. We should name her Heidi. Really? The most ridiculous Swiss name you could think of? We might as well have named her Cheese Fondue or Swiss Army Knife. After arguing over it, they agreed on Luna. Luna means moon in Italian. It's no wonder that I grew up to be a dreamer. When my parents split, I was a little upset. Pack your suitcase, we're leaving. In order to keep me from destroying our house, mom decided to take me on a trip and explore the world. Life was amazing. Why don't we travel the world for the rest of our lives? Mom was skeptical. I just graduated high school. It's the perfect time to take a break. And how will we afford that if I don't work? Ugh. See, the Lunas of this world, the dreamers, we aren't made for sitting in classrooms for hours. So we're not gonna travel the world? I'm not saying we won't. I'm saying I won't. And with that, she just gave me a wink that could have meant two things. Either she was giving me the green light to go on this trip alone, or she had something in her eye. Either way, I was left feeling confused and a little nervous. I had never traveled without her before. I mean, she was the one who packed my bags and reminded me to put on clean undies. But there was no turning back now. I ran out of things to break in the house, and Mom was starting to look at me like a caged animal. I needed to get out of there before I started gnawing on the furniture. When I told my mom I planned to go to Australia, she looked at me like I had announced I was joining the circus. Australia? That's on the other side of the world. Yes, because I got the best deal. I used my student card to get the cheapest package to Australia during peak season, and there were no other countries available. So I had to act fast since there was only one spot left. Do you know how big the spiders are in Australia? Of course I knew, but I had refused to Google anything about Australia out of fear I'd get too afraid to go. I had to do this. It was now or never. Obviously, she wasn't thrilled, but I went to grab my suitcase from the attic, feeling excited for my trip until I saw a spider. It wasn't a horror movie spider, just a tiny one that I could easily crush with a tissue. But my phobia of spiders caused me to panic, and that tiny one looked like a giant eight-legged beast. I wanted to scream and run, but my legs were frozen in place. I swear, I could hear the Jaws theme playing in my head as I slowly reached for the door, trying not to alert the spider that I was there. I managed to shut the door without letting out a scream, but as soon as I was back downstairs, all hell broke loose. I started hyperventilating, my arms flailing around like some sort of demented windmill. The next day, mom dropped me at the airport. I'm gonna miss you. You can still change your mind and come with me. You know I can't. The trip to Sydney took forever, like at least 40 hours. I was daydreaming about my future. What if I fell in love with a handsome, suntanned Australian? What if the universe had this planned for me all along? As I made my way toward the airport exit, I realized I had no idea where my ride was supposed to pick me up. Frantically, checking my phone, I noticed that my battery was almost dead. Luna, Luna, Miss Luna? He looked like a driver, but what if he was a stranger trying to trick me? My heart was racing as I hesitantly made my way towards him. As I got closer, Closer, I realized he was indeed my ride. I let out a sigh of relief, but it was short-lived. As soon as we got into the car, the driver started blasting music that was way too loud. I tried to ask him to turn it down, but he couldn't hear me over the noise. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I realized I'd forgotten to convert my currency. How was I supposed to pay for anything without any Australian dollars? I started to panic when we pulled up to my apartment. As I made my way out of the car, I heard a loud crash behind me. Turning around, I saw that my massive suitcase had fallen out of the trunk it was now spilling its contents all over the pavement oh no let me help you here let me get that for you don't worry about it this ride is on me he drove away and i was stunned by how nice australians were as i reached for my wallet to check my funds i realized with horror that it was missing that sneaky driver must have swiped it while i was distracted by the chaos of my spilled suitcase i couldn't believe it i had just been robbed by the same guy who pretended to help me i had only a little food left and chump change in my bag I had to find my thief immediately, or I would starve. That day had been a total dumpster fire. But then I saw something that caught my eye outside my apartment window. There was the driver, standing by the beach with a surfboard. I immediately ran downstairs and headed towards the beach. I looked around frantically, trying to spot my driver. After a few moments, I saw him in the water, riding away. With 
Without a second thought, I decided to steal a surfboard and join him in the water as I made my way into the ocean, ready to catch my thief. Wait, what the heck just happened? Is she okay? That must have hurt. As I opened my eyes, I saw a bunch of people surrounding me. Ouch, my face was hurting. So after I got up, the lifeguards told me that you should never enter the water holding your surfboard in front of you. Waves will hit the board and slam it right into your face. But I didn't care about any of that. My thief was gone, and I still had this board that I had borrowed and wasn't sure where to return it. That's Adam's board. Huh, Adam? He lives in that building. The girl was pointing at my apartment complex. Great, I grabbed the surfboard and headed back to my building. If I mentioned that my apartment was located on the 40th floor, the surfboard didn't even fit in the elevator. So I walked up 40 floors with the heavy board to make it back home. The next day, I woke up sore, but ready to find my thief and, well, give this Adam guy his surfboard back. I grabbed the board and headed for the elevator. I wasn't going near those stairs again. The surfboard would most certainly survive the fall, right? I shoved the board through the window and let it fall. I I mean, who was gonna notice? Ouch! I scanned the beach like a hawk trying to spot my thief, but I couldn't see beyond the waves. I needed to get everyone out of the water to identify the culprit. Shark! Shark! Everyone came running out of the water in a frenzy, but as soon as they realized there was no danger, they looked at me like I was the crazy one. And the worst part, the thief was nowhere to be seen. That night, I decided to make myself a fondue. Yeah, kind of gross to have melted cheese in the summer, but I was missing home. As I was about to finish melting the cheese on the stove, my fire alarm started screaming at me. I immediately grabbed a towel and hurriedly waved it under the fire alarm. It was useless. This thing wouldn't stop. Suddenly, there was a loud thud. Was someone here with me? I was racing through the hallway. I knew I had to run for my life. I opened the first door I saw. Hey, who are you and what are you doing in my apartment? He's after me. What? Who? Help me. No, 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 no. Don't go outside. Wow. He was so cute that I almost forgot about my fire alarm that was blasting in the background and the fact that someone was after me. Fire. Alarm. Stranger. Apartment. My neighbor was kind enough to check every closet and corner. No one was there. He also fixed my fire alarm. And by helping me fix it, I mean that he literally tore it off my ceiling. I just hoped that the building wouldn't catch on fire while I was asleep because I no longer had a fire alarm. Thank you so much. You saved me. Happy to help. I'm here for anything you need. I'm Adam, by the way. Luna, like the... Moon, I love it. Wait, are you the Adam? Oh, wow. You're the thief. Well, wait a minute. I didn't steal it. I borrowed it to go after my thief. He smiled and winked. Was he not believing me or was he flirting? Well, I didn't have time for this. I had a thief to catch. I called the driver's company, but they were as helpful as a chocolate teapot. I walked out of my apartment, hoping I'd find him at the beach again and almost stepped on something. A small box of chocolate. It had a note on it. When I opened it, it said, Welcome Luna. Aw, obviously this was from Adam. And Celia? So, my handsome neighbor had a girlfriend. Clearly, he wasn't flirting with me and thought my thief story was a lie. I laid in bed that night exhausted and annoyed, wishing for a good night's sleep. But that didn't happen. I woke up around 3 a.m. that night. Something <gasps> felt off. I was sure I wasn't alone, but with a quick look around my small studio, I saw no one. Then why did it feel like I was being watched? As I looked at my ceiling, I saw it. The spider. I'm talking a big, hairy, eight-legged nightmare that could have easily passed for a small dog. How did it end up in my apartment on the 40th floor? I won't admit it, but I was tearing up. I needed help, but who could I call at 3 a.m.? Mom, with the time difference, it was daytime for her. I immediately FaceTimed her. Hey, honey. Mom, there's a monster in my apartment. As I looked up at my ceiling, it was gone. Without thinking for a second, I jumped up and looked around. Where was it? Was I dreaming? Are you okay, honey? Mom, there's a huge spider. Remember what I always tell you. The spider is probably more afraid of you than you are of it. Ah! Behind you! It must have fallen behind my bed somehow. I swear that at that moment, the spider gave me a judgmental look. Don't you dust behind your bed. Mom, what do I do? I aim the phone toward the spider to show my mom. Stop zooming in! I'm not! This thing is huge! I felt a wave of panic wash over me. My heart started racing, and my palms began to sweat. Mom, I can't do anything by myself. I'm useless alone. Someone stole my wallet, and now there's a huge spider, and I can't achieve anything without you. That's not true, Luna. When Dad left, I thought I was 
was never going to be able to do anything alone, but I was able to. I survived. You can make it through anything. And just then, the screen went black. My phone died at the worst time. The spider was still there, and I was alone. I grabbed the nearest object I could find, which happened to be a travel guide. But as I raised it up to strike the spider, I started to have second thoughts. What if I missed, and it crawled on me? Or worse, what if I missed, and it called for all its spider friends to come and get me? There was no one to save me. I considered calling the police, but I was afraid they'd lock me up for disturbing them over a spider. I stood still watching the spider. It was looking back at me like we were in some western movie scene. Eventually, I made a move toward it, hoping I could scare it away. But it wasn't scared. It lifted its legs, ready to attack. Okay, this spider wasn't going anywhere, so I did what anyone would have done. I slept on my doormat. A few hours later, I was woken up by my neighbor Adam. Luna, what are you doing? Spider, huge. Oh, you must have met a huntsman spider. They're great. They eat mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? I'm surprised this thing doesn't eat cows. It's huge. Adam was laughing. He helped me up and looked me in my eyes. You could have knocked at my door. So I wasn't wrong. He was hitting on me. I didn't want to wake up your girlfriend. My girlfriend? Oh, Celia? That's my sister and current roommate. Oh, and just then, he pulled out my wallet from his back pocket. H how? My dad owns the building. I told him about what happened with your driver, and he mentioned that a tenant found a wallet on the floor outside. It must have fallen when you walked out of the car. I suddenly felt terribly embarrassed. I was running after my driver, thinking he stole my wallet, when in reality, he truly was a kind local who gave me a ride for free and helped me with my suitcase. Adam gave me one of his perfect smiles. Wanna go surfing? As the universe was handing me my wallet back and a handsome Australian, I felt compelled to decline. I think I'm good. I'm gonna pack my stuff and go home. He was surprised, but nodded respectfully. I packed in record speed to avoid another encounter with Dracula Spider and headed for the airport. As much as I appreciated Adam's gesture of returning my wallet, going surfing with him sounded like a disaster waiting to happen. I mean, the guy lived in his dad's building. Talk about dependent behavior. It was like looking in a mirror and realizing I needed to stop relying on my mom so much. The truth is that ever since dad left, I was running away from my problems by traveling. But if I ever wanted to grow up to be an independent adult, I needed to confront my fears head on. Even if it meant facing spiders the size of cars. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was able to weave my way out of this tangled web of fear. And it felt good. I was going back home. And I'm not running away from my problems ever again.